Hey everyone, I'm out here in the garage today and what I'm going to be doing in this video is replacing the front struts on the Acura RL. So as you saw, I did a couple of videos, one on jacking up the front end and one on jacking up the rear end of the Acura RL. And in the process of making those videos, the strut on the passenger side decided to seize on me. And those struts are original to the car. They have about 208,000 miles on them, so they were way past due. And I've had this happen before on a car. I have a CRV also in 1997, and that had old struts on it, and I jacked the front end on that car, and the two struts, both the struts on the front seized on me. So that happens from time to time if you have old struts especially, and they're leaking. So what I'm going to be doing in this video is going ahead and replacing the struts, so stay tuned. So I first thought I'd show you some footage of the bad passenger side front strut as I drove over a couple speed bumps in the road in my neighborhood. It really felt like I was driving my old pickup truck instead of an old luxury car since the strut was just not rebounding correctly. All right, to get started, I have the front of the car on jack stands and I'm removing the lug nuts with the 19 millimeter deep socket. And check out the video on jacking up the front end of the RL if you're unsure. Next, I remove the damper fork's upper bolt, which requires a 14 millimeter socket. Then I remove the damper fork's lower bolt and nut using a 17 millimeter box wrench and a 17 millimeter socket. I had to press down on the knuckle while I removed the lower bolt in order to free it. Also, it's not necessary to remove the damper fork from the car. I would just pull it off the strut and just let it rest there. With the damper fork out of the way, I removed the two 10 millimeter bolts attaching the brake line to the knuckle. Then I removed the two 12 millimeter bolts attaching the brake line to the strut. Okay, so now all the work underneath is done. I pop the hood so I can detach the strut from the car. I'll start by removing the two 12 millimeter nuts for the strut bar. Then I'll remove the three 14 millimeter nuts. I leave the nut closest to the fender for last so I can reach underneath with my left hand to brace the strut and prevent it from falling. The last thing to do here is to remove the strut from the car and there's more clearance for removing the strut by pulling the strut down into the left over the brake line. Alright so we've reached the fun part of the program and that involves transferring everything over to the new strut. So I've got the strut locked in the jaw horse. And what I'm pointing out is the alignment of the end of the spring with the top mount. 
This is extremely important to observe to make sure the strut is properly reinstalled on the car. To transfer everything over to the new strut, we need to compress the spring. I'm using my set of OEM 27036 spring compressors that you can typically borrow from your local auto parts store. And I also have a couple other styles. These seem to make really quick work of compressing Honda springs for the DIYer in their home garage. Now what I'm pointing out here is that you want to install the compressors on the spring with the threaded end of the rod facing up. There may not be enough clearance between the top mount and the hex end to fit a socket if the hex end is facing up. To install the compressors on the spring, I grab as many coils as possible, and in this case it's seven coils, and I install the compressors 180 degrees opposed to each other. Once I feel comfortable with the location of the compressors, I slide the locking safety pins in place. Okay, to compress the spring, I like to use a 19 millimeter socket on a long handled ratchet for leverage. It is not necessary with Honda springs and probably not a good idea to use an impact wrench. So what I do here is alternate back and forth between the compressors to make sure the spring is compressed evenly. And once it's adequately compressed, you should feel the spring shift on the lower mount. At this point, I can remove the 14 millimeter top nut, and an impact wrench will work fine on the OEM struts, but I like to use a five millimeter hex wrench and a 14 millimeter ratcheting wrench to take it nice and slow, just in case the spring isn't adequately compressed. And as you can see, I stopped to make sure a gap was forming between the top mount and the nut as I removed it. The compressor rod on the right got pretty close to the top mount, so I had to adjust it a little so I could remove the top mount. Under the top mount is a large washer, then the spring can be removed with the compressors intact. It's a good idea to set the spring aside way out of the way. Yep, this strut's done. I need to remove the washer that goes under the boot, so I'm tapping it with a brass hammer. Okay, so here's the new sack strut I'll be installing. I'll put the part numbers for the left and right front struts up on the screen so you have them. I would also recommend buying replacement top mounts and bump stops at the same time, just in case yours need to be replaced. Or in this case, I just need a bump stop period because mine is totally disintegrated. Your new strut should have come with a new top nut, but here's a part number if you need it. Before I install the new strut, I'm going to compress the piston a few times just to make sure the strut is actually working. To transfer everything over to the new strut, I start with the plastic seat cover, making sure it's properly lined up. Then I slide on a new bump stop. This happens to be KYB SB108. Then the washer for the boot goes on next. Then the boot itself. And I'm reusing the OEM boot since it's still in good shape. And then the seat cover gets tucked inside the boot. Alright, the spring is up next and we just want to make sure the end of the spring is seated correctly for now.
Continuing on, the large washer gets placed on top of the boot. The top mount is reinstalled, observing the alignment with the end of the spring we talked about earlier. Then the top washer and the top nut. To tighten the 14 millimeter top nut, the torque spec is 22 foot pounds. Then I'll carefully loosen the spring compressors, alternating back and forth between the compressors. and disengage the locking safety pins and remove the compressors. All right, so I'm reinstalling the strut on the car by feeding it up through the wheel well, then loosely installing the nuts. Next, I slid the damper fork onto the strut, making sure the strut's tab sits in the groove on the fork. Then I installed the upper and lower bolts. Notice that I have my jack under the ball joint to help hold everything together until I tighten the fasteners. With the fasteners in place, I jack up the knuckle until the car's weight is off the passenger side jack stand. Then I tighten the 14 millimeter upper bolt to 32 foot pounds. and the lower bolt's 17 millimeter nut to 51 foot-pounds. The two 12 millimeter strut bar nuts are tightened to 16 foot-pounds. And the three 14 millimeter strut nuts are tightened to 28 foot-pounds. Then I'll reattach the brake lines, which I probably should have done before putting it on the fork, specifically in the case of the 12 millimeter bolt that's installed vertically. I just tighten all these bolts by feel, but the spec is 7.2 foot pounds for the 10 millimeter bolts and 16 foot pounds for the 12 millimeter bolts. And the last thing to do here, which is not shown, is I put the wheel back on, then tighten the lug nuts to 80 foot-pounds with the car on the ground.
All right, so there you have it. Strut replacements done on the Acura RL. Not too difficult a process at all. Really pretty simple. Uh, the one thing, of course, is compressing the spring, and I would take my time with that. Be very careful. Be very methodical about how you do that, and be very cognizant of what you're doing. So that's the one precarious area when you're changing struts that can really get you if you're not really paying attention. Uh, so the sack struts for sure, I would use those. Um, I think those are also recommended by Eric the Car Guy. I remember seeing a video where he talked a little bit about that. So definitely the sack struts are, those are really good struts. They ride very nicely. Of course longevity is the question. I've never used these struts before, but they are made in Japan and you know they seem to fit the car pretty well. They were very much on point in terms of fitment along with the OEM struts. So I would highly recommend those. The other struts that I've seen out there, I saw some mixed reviews on them. That's why I didn't go with any other brand. And uh, these seem to be working very well. So that's pretty much it from here. And thanks for watching.